<laughs> I'm super excited about this. So Welcome back custom car fans to a jam-packed episode on BK's project. We have got an absolute feast for you. We have got the dash being finished, the steering column being finished. We're onto fuel tank fabrication. We're building a strut brace for this bad boy and a whole load more. So let's get straight into it. The dash cluster housing is all in and mounted, but being just sheet metal, it's not strong enough. So here we have some thicker, three mil laser cut CNC folded brackets. And as you can see there, that's gonna give us some really strong pickup points. I'll put one each side of the column. There we go, always tricky one-handed, but there we are. So they'll get welded in onto the box section here. That gives me some really good pickup strength here for the bearing, column bearing. And then on the other side, uh, in the stereo housing, I have an additional one. Hopefully my CAD doesn't fail me with this either. Yep, yeah, perfect. I am armed with my favorite implements for this activity. Belt file and the little Rolock pistol grip tool. Awesome little Cleco crocodile clamps. These are brilliant if you haven't ever used them before. They're so simple. Right, let's offer this up. I have checked in several times, all different angles. So once it's in, it's in. So I think I'll just go ahead and tack that one in place. It's so satisfying when your laser cut CAD design parts fit. <coughs> seems simple, seems like, oh, well, it, it should just fit, otherwise you've done something wrong, but sometimes you do do something wrong. On, off, on, off, with all the clamps, the angle iron, all the rest of it, it's part of it. So with the brackets welded in and the dash nice and secure, we were able to secure these two top bearings here, these spherical bearings. Uh, and then that enabled us to work our way down the column to the steering bevel box here, offset box, whatever you want to call it. Put in this intermediate pillow bearing as well. The steering column is all in, all the support bearings in place. And that means we have got a silky smooth operation. Dead happy with that. Steering columns can often be a bit of a nightmare when you're dealing with these post fans. They're so short, hence why we've got the uh, deflection box in there. But no uh, aggressive angles on these UJs. So super happy with how that operates. Ah, oh, result. Right, on to the next job. While we're attending to the brake pedal and reinforcing that to the bulkhead, uh, another thing that occurred to me was the angle of the floor here is very steep. And when you're sat on the, well, we haven't got the base in, but when you're sat on the base here, on the seat base, your foot is going to be on such an angle here to operate the pedals that it's going to want to try and slip down this surface. And while there did look to be grip tape on some of this, I don't think that's going to be sufficient, especially imagine if you're in this for like four hours on a decent drive, holding your foot up there. I think it would get pretty uncomfortable. So I headed over to the computer after taking some measurements. I drew a little something special and here it is. You get a near enough ready to go part. I am going to weld up these corners just to finish it off. And that'll be it's aluminium, so it's lightweight. That'll be a super trick little part that will bolt on there and stop your heel from going anywhere. Yeah, 
Yeah. Next up, we're on to fuel tank fabrication. I've got some profiles laser cut and CNC folded. Uh, we've got some baffles here to go in the tank, the top sheet. And then I've also got a near enough duplicate of this tank. And that is because the space that we've got available under the vehicle, with the vehicle being so short, uh, is quite limited. So these tanks aren't massive and obviously want a decent bit of range for Bernard to be able to get to all the destinations that he's going without having to stop every five minutes for diesel. Uh, so I'm gonna do this one first. I'm gonna go around and scotch up all the edges, clean up the aluminium, make sure there's no oxidization on there, clean it down with acetone and then pop it all together and TIG weld it up. trying to be a human robot today. Before I close these fuel tanks up and weld the lid on, I'm actually going to put them in the vehicle where they need to sit to try and work out where the inlet needs to go and the outlets and the return. My sender is in the shallow end. So essentially I've got a nominal reserve of the difference, that was my thinking. And if I can use that as well to facilitate the link pipe, then we're on to a winner. So for now, I will cut this bracket out so I can get the other tank in and then start measuring up for pipe. Let's dance along another trail. So what have I got to do now? Well, I need to secure this. Uh, so I'm gonna make some straps or brackets to secure that in the chassis. It's gonna be the same both sides, so there's no problem there. Work it all out on this one, then duplicate it on the other one. Then the next step is to work out how we're filling it up. And I think what we're gonna do is because we've got good access to this end of the tank, is we're gonna go up and through the quarter panel here. So I've got a filler uh, cap, I've got some tubing, I've got some flexi uh, fuel hose, and I also then need to make a balance pipe, the feed. Yeah, so quite a bit to do. Heading in the right direction, across there to the other side. So I have no idea if you're gonna be able to see this, but this is human evolution letting me down again. I'm not an octopus. I don't have eight arms and hands, and I've got to somehow try and hold the camera, hold these two pieces in, three pieces, and then try and mark uh, on the inside of the quarter panel where I'm gonna drill the all important, one time only hole. There go. Oh, perfect. Right, now I can probably go from the outside now, I've got that centile. So let's come round here, where you should get a much better view. There we go. Oh yeah! Nice, that's the perfect size hole. Can get a little bit of rubber around here. Yeah. I'm probably in the way again, I know, I've got my big fat head in the way. But something like that. tricky task is make a strut brace. Need to get a little bit of rigidity in the top of this uh, chassis. And so I've made a little cardboard template here. Feed that in. That will take up two of the uh, struts bolts. And then this hole here will be the one that goes through the steering box. So the, the deflection box. So I'm gonna cut that on the plasma out of five mil. And then I'll mirror that 
onto the other side. That's this line here and a little return edge. So there's gonna be a right angle fold down here. And then I've also popped a bit of tube on the top. I have used my angle finder to take some measurements, work out some angles. And as you can see, I've made a very technical drawing there. Probably means nothing to anybody except me. Might not mean much to me when I go upstairs to draw it on the computer. And here we are on Fusion 360, the software that I'm now using to do all my CAD and CAM output. So this is a simulation of the toolpath on the plasma, which is great because it shows us exactly what's gonna happen when we move over to the table, which we're doing here, cutting out the actual part. This is five mil mild steel. And look at that. Absolutely amazing that we can do that in-house. Put a little fold in this, little crease through there to give it a bit of angle. Oh, look at that, that's sitting perfectly. Nice, bend up the tube now and join the two. And there we go, two identical bends in a bit of CDS. Something like that anyway, might trim it down a little bit more, take out some of this gap. But to be honest, we've got so much height inside the uh, engine cover that other than this section here, which is going to have to have a little notch in it for the engine cover, that's unavoidable, I think, because this side is closer because of all the pedals, whereas this side is further away. Um, yeah, I think that might actually be all right. And then I might make a uh, bracket off of this to mount the ECU on, because that'd be a nice place to put the ECU well inside the engine cover, inside the vehicle, nice and dry, out of the way, and all this wiring can go up onto there. I've got the front panel back on, and I've taken some measurements of this top opening in the front panel, in the grill. Uh, this is where obviously I'm gonna take the air coming through, duct it into some pipework, and then feed that straight down into the intake of the engine. Now, normally there'd be a plastic air box over here, big, ugly contraption. Uh, we're doing away with that and doing away with the math as well. So I just need to work out how I'm going from this aperture to that pipe with some filtration in the middle. Thankfully, I remembered that I had this bad boy. This is a Promax housed filter. Now, usually these have a little bell rubber on the end and they would just sit in an engine bay like that, uh, not ducted to anything. But I thought, well, why not use that as an inline housing? We're actually using them on another project, which is why I had the idea, because that's exactly what we're doing on another project. But I think it'll work really well on this one as well, in that I can duct my air from the front panel here into this housing. That obviously gives me the filtration, because inside here, You've got a lovely foam ram air filter. These are great quality, obviously easy to get hold of replacements should you need to. Anyway, I'll put that back together in a minute. And if I sit that here somewhere, I've got some riv nuts in the bottom, so it's easy to make a bracket to mount it to. Right, so I would have that, yeah, in line there, and then I would just need to duct that round and into the intake. I think that could be pretty cool, actually, and I could even have it on a slight angle, couldn't I? Yeah, okay, so I need to work out my mounts for my radiator to also give me an option to bolt this to. And work out how deep I'm gonna go with the ducting. Hmm, little bit to work out. It's not always plain sailing when you're building custom cars. In fact, more often than not, it's, it's not. This is one fine example. I wanted to bend up an aluminium hoop uh, for the top radiator stays and also to mount the air filter assembly for the engine on. And I thought, yeah, no problem. So I drew it up in Bentec as I would normally. I went to the tube bender and it just snapped. So this is the stock material I've got here. I don't want to wait and find the same problem with another grade of aluminium. I do recall having this problem once before and I think the solution was as follows. And here's the solution. Fire! Yeah, so basically I've just heated this up to anneal the aluminium. A quick cheat way of doing this if you uh, want a little tip. Permanent pen. I don't know how scientific this is, but it seems to work for me. So basically I'll just scribble all over the area that I know is going to be uh, moving around in the bend. Then I hit that with the blowtorch 
And when the uh, permanent pen disappears, when it, it burns it off essentially, that seems to be a really good indicator that you've annealed the material. And it's worked. So this was just a scrap piece to try. Now I'm gonna get the actual stock and bend up my hoop. Uh, so now I've reset that for the second bend. I've taken the angle finder off in case it pulls through enough material that the angle finder is going to foul on here. And I'm hoping that 92 degrees, so that's only a two degree spring back, should be right. We'll see. Let's go. Don't snap, don't snap, don't snap, don't snap, don't snap. Don't go too far. Please. Moment of truth. Oh, yeah, look at that, bang on. Okay, five mil aluminium loaded on the table. Let's go, see what we got. Back onto Fusion 360. I'm really getting the hang of this software now, which is great. It's proving to be super capable. Picked up some more aluminium sheet as we run out. So now I can plasma cut the intake ducting and get that folded up. Check that out. I'm pretty happy with that. That's very thin for my plasma cutter. That's 1.5 mil aluminium. Uh, I don't have an auto height sensing changing fancy gizmo on my plasma cutter. It's like an entry level machine really. It does mean when you're cutting really thin stuff, when it warps under the, the heat from the cut, sometimes it just messes up and you, you won't get a part out like this. Now I've just got to try not to mess it up by marking out all my folds and making sure I do the right fold at the right time. So that's not bad. It's not perfect but it's not bad. The folds that I've done are absolutely spot on. I'm really happy with them. The tops line up, the gap is weldable, which is what I wanted it to be. Um, the issue I've got now, and there may have been a way that I could have folded it without having the issue, is I'm gonna struggle to fold this one back this way with this in place, because I've got to butt it up to the lifting part of the, press uh, the folder. Same on this side. And then the other thing I've got to try and work out is how to bend that lip down. I think I probably should have bent that one down right at the beginning. Oh, I don't know, maybe not, because I folded them. There's probably a way to do it. I didn't do it, but it's certainly salvageable. So I'm gonna just trim these little bits off here. It's not gonna make any difference to the overall end result. And then I'm gonna fold these back, and then I'm gonna try and work out how to do this front. <laughs> I'm super excited about this. So I've got it in. Yep, it's not quite finished. I've got to make the top sheet and I've got a bit of four inch tube to weld on the back, but I'm waiting until I've welded up these gaps first because obviously welding close to an edge, if I hole sawed that out, look how close that, well, it's basically gonna take up the whole of the, uh, the flat surface there. So I'll wait to do that, but it gives you an idea, doesn't it? I think that's going to be really cool. And then obviously my filter is going to go in the middle there. So I think that probably wraps up this video. There's quite a lot in there. I've got a whole load more to come. I've got some exciting stuff in the next video. Uh, I've got the exhaust fabrication and we've also got some stuff to help with adding some power. Like an uprated intercooler. So let's wrap this one up. Join us in the next one. Thanks for watching.